Yo, what's up? Welcome to Vikings Vintage, presented by Pepsi. My name is Gabe Henderson from the Vikings Entertainment Network, alongside my co-host and Vikings.com audio producer, Mr. Chris Corso. And tonight, we have the special privilege of being joined by Vikings co-defensive coordinator, slash D-line coach, slash assistant head coach, Andre Patterson. And coach, while I know you are deserving of all these titles in your 39-year coaching career, I, I got to say, it it is hard to, to keep up with some of these titles. So for, for starters, in addition to running this entire defense, as well as coaching this revamped defensive line, what does the, the assistant head coach position entail? Uh, it's just doing whatever I can do to help them out. You know, um, to be honest with you, I've been doing it for a long time. So, <laughs> so it's really not that big of a difference. So nothing new. Um, but you know, it's 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 uh, you know help handling with the team, uh, help making decisions about the team, help organizing organizing practices, and you know uh, help organizing organizing the coaching staff. You know those kind of things. So uh, you know, it's something that I've been helping him with for a long time. And uh, you know, really, really, all the titles don't mean anything. I'm just a football coach, man. You know, I, I don't I don't look at it all like that. I'm just a football coach. I just come in and whatever you need me to do, I'm going to do. And and I I'm coach it the same way I did when I walked in as a high school coach. In high school, you got to wear a lot of hats. You got to do a lot of jobs. And that's what I'm used to doing. So there's no different for me. One thing that always stood out to me is you'd always bring up how you started out as a teacher. So how does how does that work? Just be taking all those talents you had as a teacher, teaching young students and children, and then bringing that to a football coach, kind of how have you taken those skills and, and brought you? I mean, you're now you're an assistant head coach in the NFL, so it's taken you a long way. Well, I, I think the biggest thing, you know, as a teacher, you have to find a way uh, to reach all your, all your children in your classroom. You know, you, you just can't, you just can't put the information out there for, for the so-called smart kids in the front of the room, right? So yeah. you have to find out how they learn. You know, every everybody learns differently, right? Some people are visual, they can get it. You know, some people have to walk through it. Some people have to feel it. And to me, the thing is, you know, good teachers find out how all the kids in their classroom learn the best. And that's what I've always done as a coach. And, you know, I have to coach to every single guy, you know, in training camp, there's, there's 18 D linemen sitting in there and, and all 18 of them learn differently. Well, my job is to find a way to find that button to get all 18 guys to get it. And uh, so that's been all, that's been the way that I've coached from the beginning. And that's just the way that I view being a good coach. It's, you know, it's easy to coach the great athlete, the great special player, you know, it wasn't hard for me to coach John Randall. That wasn't <laughs> hard. Okay. Uh, Dave had a question about John Randall. So you just keep him up perfectly. It wasn't, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't hard for me to coach him, you know, uh, but my, my job was to try to bring as many guys in that room with Johnny to being as close to him as possible. That was my job. And sometimes it takes different roads and avenues to get that done. Yeah. Like Corso said, I feel like you, you have your, your eyes on my note sheet right here. So <laughs> speak, speaking of John Randall, you got two guys now and Dalvin Thomas and Michael Pierce who both said they want to have a Johnny Randall type motor. They, they, they said the personality, that's a whole different thing, but the motor, you can coach that. Mm -hmm. So for you, when you hear those guys say that, how does that affect your 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 teaching? Well, do you want me to tell you the truth? Yeah, please do. Oh, it, ain't gonna, it, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. I'm just, I'm just telling you the truth. All right, so Johnny Johnny was the most unbelievable guy that I've I've never seen anybody in my coaching career at any position at mm. any position be able to have the motor and stamina that that guy had. OK, and so it's OK for you to try to strive to be there. OK, but it's not going to happen. I mean, I, I can remember I can remember my first training camp, Gabe. And, you know, back then training camp was something else. You were in two days for five, five weeks. Right. Mm -hmm. I remember as my as my first training camp and we're about in the middle of the third week and everybody's dragging, you know, everybody's hurting They're dragging coaches. You got no voice anymore because you're screaming at them to get him to go. And as soon as, as soon as Johnny hit the field, he's like the energizer bunny screaming, yelling, just, you know, all over the place. And I'm like, man, how in the world? So, you know, it's, it's a water break. And I walk up to him and I go, yo, big dog, what the heck are you taking? <laughs> right. He goes, coach, 
He goes, Coach, I don't do that. Okay. He goes, I don't do that. I don't put nothing bad in my body. He said, come on, man. Nobody can do this naturally. Nobody. He said, look, Coach, after practice, just come by my locker, and I'll show you why. Okay? So practice is over, and I go, I go by his locker. He said, hey, Coach, look at that picture inside my locker. And I look at the picture inside of, of his locker, and it's the house he grew in, up in. Mm. Two bedroom, okay, cement floors, one bathroom, you know, uh, seven, eight people living in there. Okay, he said, Coach, I look at that every day. So I look at that every day. I could still be there. You know, I, I could be I could be pushing in railroad ties like one of my brothers. I mm-hmm. could be I could be a garbage man like one of my brothers working in, in the heat in Texas. Because I'm playing football. This ain't hard. This ain't hard. So why am I going to feel sorry for myself? Because I get to run around out there and play a game in the heat. OK, mm-hmm. so it was it was a, it was a special mentality that he had and he, and he got it. You know what I mean? He got it. And so that's why I'm saying you can strive to try to do that. OK, but it, there's there's something <laughs> special that's got to be brewing in you to be able to get that done. I just got the chills literally listening to that story. I don't know about you, Gabe. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to learn more, more about the mentality that you, you think Dalvin Tomlinson and Michael Pierce possess then. Oh, well, I think they are both unbelievably strong. They're both unbelievably physical. Okay, but I think the most important thing, and and the fans and the media got a chance to meet them. And so about what I'm about to say is going to be easy for them to agree with that. Mm-hmm. They both are very, very intelligent. Okay, good yep. people, very, very intelligent. And so they're going to bring that intelligence, that smarts, that physicality, that strength, all the things that we need to be successful up front. You know, Chris and Gabe, the thing that's funny is it's so funny how other people tell us what we need and they don't know what we do. Right. <laughs> all, you know, all, that's a bar, the, coach. You know, all, all the time I hear, oh, they need a penetrating three technique. They need a penetrating three technique. Well, we had the number one defense in the league and we didn't have a penetrating defense. We don't ask our three technique to do that. Mm-hmm. So why do we go out and get something that we don't use? I don't get that. <laughs> Everybody, oh, they need a they need a pitch. They need, so you, obviously you ain't watching us play. That's the way I look at it, right? <laughs> I, we were great when we had two big, physical, strong guys that let them three linebackers run and make plays. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. So, so I don't get it when you say, "Oh, they got to go get a penetrate." That's not what we do. Mm-hmm. I love that you. I mean, you're literally leading us to our next questions. Which I told you, you got he got his eyes in our notes, amazing. man. <laughs> I was. I mean, Andre, you know, I started at Winter Park in 2015. I've, I've been here. I've watched you grow this defense, and and I literally remember when you guys brought in Linval Joseph. And I grew up in New York, so I watched him play as a New York Giant. I watched him win a Super Bowl. Uh, is there any similarities between these guys when, when you look at a guy? You you I, you must have handpicked Linval. So um, do you see that kind of player in in one of these guys or, or both of them? I mean, well, it, it was funny because I'm uh, funny you asked that question because you know uh, when Michael Pierce was here, he got a workout in the weight room, and s- s- some guys sent me some pictures of him working out in the weight room. And when I first clicked on it and I looked at it, I said, oh, that's LJ. What is LJ doing in our locker room? (laughs) What is he doing in our weight room? You know what I mean? And so then I kept going and I finally figured out who it was. And then when I blew it up, I saw that it was Michael Pierce. Okay? Strength, size, uh, athletic ability is very, very similar to Linville Joseph. The difference is Linville 6'5 and Mike 6'1. But Mm -hmm. all the other attributes as a football player are very, very similar. Wow. Coach, I, I know, well, when this comes out, it will be less than a week from the NFL draft. So I know we'll talk about that later in the show. But I got I got one more question regarding free agency because when you when you talk about Michael Pierce and Dalvin Thompson, I mean, even some of these other guys, Stephen Weatherly, that's back, they all say, hey, Andre Patterson is the reason why I'm here. Mm-hmm. So f- for you, what does that free agency period look like? Because the way they talk about it, it's just like, yeah, Andre Patterson, you know, picked up the phone and said, hey, it's Andre Patterson. <laughs> And they're like, yeah, you know, I'm signing. (laughs) I wish it was like that. I wish it was like that, but it's not. Uh, You know, I I think uh, I think Rick would tell you I'm very picky on, uh, you know, on players. 
uh, you know, there's a, there's a skill set that I look for. There's also a, a, a type of individual that I look for. Uh, and so when I find that guy, then it's then it's you know time for us to put my recruiting hat on. And, and get a chance to visit with them. And the one thing that I always do is say, hey, man, any coach can tell you anything, right? Mm. Right. But pick up the phone and call your buddies. Pick up the phone and call your guys around the league and see what they tell you. If you want to get paid and you want to get better, then come stop in Minnesota. <laughs> right. And I just leave it at that. As you know, hey, Sheldon Richardson came here for one year. And he got paid. He couldn't get paid anyplace else. He came here one year and he got paid. So if that's what you want to do, if that's what you're looking to do, all right, then I'm here for you. Mm. And so I just let I just let it speak for them. They go call their buddies. They go call other guys in the league. And then the next thing you know, they know more about me than I could have told them. You know, instead of me spending my time on the phone (laughs) trying to sell myself. Right. So they end up knowing more about me than I ever could have told them. And then now it all changes after that. I feel like this is like I'm Andre Patterson and I approve this message. I love it. <laughs> well, he lets the players do the talking. Exactly. For him. Exactly and right. I'm sure there's one player that would do all the talking in the world for you, and that's Daniel Hunter. I mean, to from what he was at LSU to what he's become in the NFL, it's pretty unbelievable. Now heading into his sixth season, so looking at him as a draft prospect because he didn't have that many sacks his last year at LSU. What is it that you saw out of him as a player and as a raw prospect? And can, how do you kind of use that going forward when looking at guys in this year's draft? Well, I, you know, I, I, I think, Chris, for me, I, I've always looked at it differently. You know, I don't I don't look at the numbers. OK, yeah. I don't look at how many sacks did he have? How many tackles for losses did he have in college? You want to know the reason why? Because it doesn't make a difference when they get to the NFL. Mm-hmm. The game's changed. It's not how many guys have you seen blow it up in college as defensive linemen and can't get any sacks when they come into the NFL. It's a total different game. So I'm looking for a skill set. Okay. I'm looking for a skill set that computes to this league. Okay. Because no matter who I get, I'm going to have to change them. They're going to have to learn how to rush like a professional against professional NFL offensive linemen. So if they have the skill set, number one, uh, to do what we what we need for them to do, and then number two, if they have the mindset that they're willing to grind, and and most importantly that they're going to submit to coaching, because the hardest thing as a as a position coach is the NFL is to get these young guys to let their college life go. Mm. They don't want to do that. They believe that. This is what I did at USC. It's how I played at USC, and they get here and they don't want to let it go. Right. And so because of that, they never developed to the player that everybody uh, uh, thought they were going to be. So that's why I'm always trying to find a guy that's willing to submit to coaching. okay, willing to hold my hand and let me mold them any way I want to mold them. And so when I find that, like, okay, this guy's got a shot. And that's what happened with DJ Wanham last year. You know, that's why I was so crazy about DJ Wanham. Number one, he fit the skill set. Number two, he was intelligent. And number three, he was willing to submit to coaching. Hmm. So so with DJ Wanham, with Michael Pierce, Dalvin Thomas, and Stephen Weatherly, Daniil Hunter, all these guys on your defensive line, I'm not even talking about defense that you that, that you have to coach uh, as in general, but like defensive line specific, specifically, knowing all of that, all those players, like how important is it to you to – you know, maybe add another pass rusher in this draft? Well, I, I think for me, I've always looked at it like, okay, I'm going to see who I like that if I'm fortunate enough to get it at 14, who I like, okay? Mm-hmm. If, if if who, who I like in the third round, who I like in the fourth round, you know, all the way through. And so, as, as, as you know, uh, Gabe, with defensive ends, I've had success all through the draft, <laughs> you know, so it's not just that we have to get a guy at 14 for it to work. Um, so, you know, I spend the time trying to get to evaluate and know all the guys and know how they fit. And then from there, uh, hopefully, you know, Rick gives me somebody that I'm excited about. And then we roll up our sleeves and, and uh, you know, and, and try to get that guy better. I got a crazy question for you. You've been coaching a long time in the NFL. Who is the, the, the biggest prospect as a pass rusher that you remember that you're just like, man, that guy's a home run. That guy is a no brainer. Home run. It doesn't have to be a guy you drafted, but man. somebody you looked at the, the tape and you said, man, that is the guy that, that I would like on my team. Wow. Well, 
honestly, I, when Courtney Brown came out of Penn State. Wow. That's a name drop. I was like, oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> this, this guy has a chance to be one of the all-time greats, you know, 6'6", six, six, you know, 280 pounds, you know, 5% body fat, unbelievable long arms, ran four or five, big mm. hands, 40 vertical. I mean, it was just everything right. that you look for, but most importantly, a great human being. So, you know, I thought for sure, you know, he was going to be, you know, one of the guys that'd be one of the all-time greats. Coach, uh, I truly appreciate you joining us today. Um, any final thoughts going forward? I know a lot of people will be wanting to hear from you between now and the draft. So any final thoughts? Well, hey, uh, Viking fans, we miss you. I, I hope everything works out great to where you're back in the stadium when we get ready to play in September. <laughs> Believe me, you make the biggest difference on our defense. And I, I say that with all sincerity. You're the best fans in the National Football League. So I hope that everything works out great. We miss you, we love you, and we look forward to seeing you in September. Absolutely. And with that said, Vikings fans, stay tuned to Vikings.com for your most up-to-date coverage of the team. We got you covered through the draft and beyond. Coach Patterson, appreciate you joining us again. Thanks, man. I got you anytime you need me. Yes, Thanks, sir. Coach.